Hi guys, welcome to another Chumma Valley Maths uh, tutorial. Mr. Gordon here. Um, I'm going to be looking at the core maths papers again. And I want to look at some of the other formulas that were on our formula sheet that we received from AQA. So the shape formulas that we were given um, were the cone, the sphere and the pyramid. And we had the volume and surface area for the cone and the sphere and just the volume for the pyramid. So I'm going to look at the cone mainly and I'll also take a quick look at, at the sphere. So I mean, let's start with an example and we're going to work out the volume and the surface area for a cone and we'll just have a quick look at the formulas. So the volume formula says it's one third times pi times the radius squared times the height. So do we have all that information on the diagram? Well, I've got the, the vertical height here. So this is the, the H value, 12. And I just need to find out the radius, and then I would have all the values I needed to complete that um, formula. So, I mean, I've got this measurement here. The whole circle is 10. Now, hopefully that you will know that that's the diameter. And if you want to find the radius, you just need to half that. So a radius goes from the center of a circle to the circumference. So I'll, I'll pencil that in there. And that is going to be worth half the diameter. So I'll label that with a, with a 5. And I'm just going to mark in the height because sometimes it's quite confusing. Obviously, the vertical height is going to run from the bottom perpendicular to the very top of the shape. So that is our height. And that is 12. I'm just going to relabel that 12. Move it inside the shape so it makes um, more sense. So I've got all of the... Um, all the bits I need for that. So I could pull up the calculator and just start typing in um, the formula for the volume. So if I wanted to work out the volume of this cone, then I would do one third, so fraction button, one third, that's times pi. Now pi on my calculator, I have to press shift and then this button down here, because you might not be able to see it very clearly, but pi is in yellow just above the, the button down here. So I press shift and then that button and that will give me a pi sign. Pi will be somewhere on your calculator. Hopefully you can find it. Then back to the formula. So we're timesing that by the radius squared. Well, the radius we said was 5. So 5, my squared button is this one here. And then times by the height. And the height was 12. So if I wanted to work out the, the volume, just type the whole formula in, put in the right values, press equals, and that will give me the, the volume. So it says 100 pi. And I could, I mean, I could leave it like that if it didn't ask me to change it into a decimal. But if I wanted to put it in a decimal form, I'd press this button here. So the SD button turns it into a decimal. So there's my volume. I've got 314.1592654. And I would round that up to um, a certain decimal place or some significant figures, whatever the question asked. If it didn't ask, I'd probably round it up to maybe one or two decimal places. So I'm just going to grab that and I'll... Pop that out there. So that was the volume. I'll leave that to one side. So the volume's there. So I'll put it up there. That was the volume. And now we're going to look at the surface area formula. Do I have all the bits that I need for this? So it starts off. We have pi, which we can find on the calculator. The radius, which we said was 5. And then it's got this L. And I mean, what is L in this formula? Well, L is the slant height. It's this length of this line here. And we're not given that. So for this question, we've got to work that out. And I'm hoping that some of you can start to see how we're going to do that. If you look at this line here and the red lines I've marked in, you will see that we've made a right angle triangle. I said these two lines were perpendicular, which means at right angle. So we've got a right angle triangle. And how do we work out the one of the sides of a right angle triangle if we know the other two? Well, we're going to have to use Pythagoras. So let's have a look at doing that. So I've copied the, uh, the diagram onto here. This is our cone. And we had 12 and we had 5 there. So I've redrawn this right angle triangle. I've taken it outside of the shape and redrawn it over here. And what? how do we apply Pythagoras? So I've, the formula's here. And the Pythagoras um, formula is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And the diagram up here shows you that a and b are the legs, the smaller sides. And C is the longest side, the hypotenuse. That is always opposite the right angle. 
So you can see our side is opposite the right angle, so that's the longest side. That's the C. These two, the 5 and the 12, are A and B. Okay, so I've drawn some squares here to remind me of what I should be doing. So the first thing I need to do is square the two sides. So what is the square of 5? Well, 5 times 5 is going to be 25. And I'm going to put that value inside the square. All right, so that's the 5 squared. Then I'm going to do the 12. I'm going to square that. So 12 times 12 is 144. So there we have a squared and we have b squared. What do we do with those once we squared them? Well, it says we need to add them together. So 144 plus 25 makes 169. And that equals c squared. That equals the square of the longest side. So from that, we've got to really think, well, how do I get the answer for the length? Because the length's not going to be 169. We've got a length of 12 and a length of 5. I'm sure the other side's not going to be 169. So what's the opposite of squaring? What number would we square to get that value of 169? Bring up the calculator and then just type in square root of 169 and that will tell you that the side length is going to be 13. So the slant height, the longest side of our triangle, is 13. All right, so that 13 is this value here, and we need that for our surface area formula. So let's go back and try and work that out. I'll put the 13 on the diagram. Okay, so I've got the L now plus pi. I can find that, and also I've got the radius. So that formula, we're now ready to go ahead and start substituting our values into this formula. So again, you can put this all into the calculator in one go. I'm actually going to put the first part of the formula, this pi RL bit, into a bracket so it's nicely packaged. You don't have to do this, but I just like to, to do that. So pi times the radius, which is 5, times the slant height, which is 13. And I'm going to close that off and then put plus. So that's that bit done. Plus the other side, so I'll put it into a bracket again. Shift pi times the radius squared, so times 5 squared my square buttons there close that bracket close that off excuse me one second so once you put it in press equals and 90 pi this time decimalize it if you want to and there's the answer for the surface area so I'll just grab that and i'll put it on here so we uh, can see both answers okay so i mean have a go at that yourself and see if you can get those answers and what I'll do is, um, I'll give you some other questions to have a quick practice on. So guys, here are two questions. Pause the video, have a go at these, and then come back and I'll go through the work solutions with you. Hopefully you've had a go at those questions. Um, let's take a look at the answers. So with the first one, I mean, I started by working out the, uh, the slant height here because I know I need that for the surface area formula. So, I mean, I did... The Pythagoras, so 8 squared plus 5 squared, so 64 plus 25 was 89. And then obviously you need to square root that to get the, the length. So the slope height was 9.434. And the first formula I did, I did uh, volume. So I just typed into the calculator, you can see it here. It's 1 third times pi times the radius squared, which is 5, times the height, which was 8. And that gave me 209.4. For the surface area... Just following the formula, I did pi times r, which is 5, the radius, times l, the slant height, which is that 9.434 I worked out, plus pi times the radius squared. So put all that in, and I got 226.7. I've rounded these up um, very crudely on the calculator. So if you've got something very similar, that would be the right answer. Um, second question. This one was a bit different. It... Again, it gave us the slant height this time, but it didn't give me the perpendicular height. It didn't actually give me the real height of the cone. So I had to work that out before I could um, do the volume. So I did that first. I did two, uh, 12.6 squared, and then I subtracted 5.7 squared because I had the longest side this time. So if you're trying to find a shorter side, then you square the longest side and subtract the square of the other short side. So that left me with 126.27. Square root that again to get the actual height. So this length here was h was 11.2. So 
So the actual height of the cone is 11.2. So when doing the volume, follow the formula. One third times pi times the, the radius squared times the height, which was 11.2. That gave me 381.06. And again, I've cropped that off the calculator. So if you round it up to something very similar to that, that will be right. The surface area, just following the formula again, I did pi times the radius times the slant height, which was given 12.6 plus pi times the radius squared, 5.7 squared, and then I got this value here. Okay, so hopefully you got those right. And I'm going to go on to a slightly more complicated example. So, oh, actually, before I move on, I haven't put any units on. I haven't put, I mean, I put centimeters, but I haven't put the actual units on. So when you're doing volume, volume is for three dimension, three dimensions, so you're going to stick a three on there. So that's centimeters cubed, that's for volume. And if you're doing area, that's a two-dimensional unit, so that's going to be centimeters squared. All right, don't forget to put your units on in the test because sometimes they can give you a mark for having the correct units shown. So just put those on, okay? Um, and then we're going to have a look at this more tricky example. So have a look at this question. It's um, a cone set on top of half a sphere. And I want you to guys to pause the video and have a go at working out the volume and the surface area of this shape. And then I'll come back and show you the work solution. Okay, I hope you've had a go at that. And uh, let me take you through the solution. So here, um, I've started by just doing the volume first. Let's try and work out the volume of this shape, the total volume of both shapes together. So I've written down in words what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the cone, the volume of the cone, plus the volume of half a sphere. So the volume for a cone, we've been looking at that already, so we just follow the formula. We've got one third times pi times the radius squared, which was seven. We can see the, the radius of the cone here is seven, plus the height. Now this is where I think most people go wrong with a question like this. The height of the cone is not 22 because you've got the, the hemisphere underneath. So you've got to take the height of the hemisphere off of this 22, as that's the height of the whole shape. So how tall is the hemisphere? Well, you've got a radius here. And if you imagine a, um, a sphere, a whole sphere is just like a ball, isn't it? So if you're at the center of the ball and you travel in any direction to the surface, it will be the same distance. It will just be a radius. So if I draw this a radius here, perpendicular to the one I've got, then that red line is worth seven, and that is the height of the sphere. So the red line here is seven. And if that's seven, then the rest of the height must be for the cone. So 22 take away seven is gonna leave me with 15, and that is where that value has come from here. So that's the height of the cone, 15. So that's the volume of the cone, and that's the value I got. The sphere, now obviously I don't have um, the, the formula for half a sphere, so I've gotta use the whole sphere volume, and then just divide it by two at the end. And that's exactly what I've done. So I've put in four thirds times pi times the radius cubed this time. So that's seven for the radius of the sphere. And then divided that all by two. And that gave me this value here. And I just simply add the two volumes together. And that gives me the total volume for the entire shape. And for the surface area, again, in words, I've tried to describe what I'm doing. So for the surface area, the cone, the formula for the cone, it kind of shows you two parts, doesn't it? It's got the pi RL and plus pi R squared. Well, pi R squared is the area of a circle. So that's the base of the cone. That second bit is just the base of the cone. And I don't have that area. That's sort of been taken up by the sphere. It's not an actual surface area that I can see. So I don't have to include that part. So when I'm doing um, the, the surface area, I've done the cone without the base. So I've, I've only used the first part of the formula. I haven't used the second bit. So I've just done pi times the radius times the slant height. Now, obviously the radius was given to me seven, but the slant height of the cone wasn't given to me. So from our earlier examples, again, I've used Pythagoras to work this out. Now don't forget that the height of the cone is 15. So if I, if I mark this in, this bit here, just down to that point there is 15. And obviously you've got your seven is your radius there. So it's 15 and seven. So I've done seven squared plus 15 squared in the red box up here. And that gave me this value. 
So I square rooted that, and that gave me the slant height, which was 16.5529, etc. So that bit there was 16.55. And I've just put that in to the formula there. So pi times the radius times the, uh, the slant height is the total surface area for the cone that I need. And then I need to include half a sphere. So I need the surface area for half a sphere. I don't have the formula for that. I do have the formula for a whole sphere surface area, which is 4 pi r squared. And I have all those values. So I can just put in 4 times pi times the, the radius squared, 7 squared. And then I only want half of that. So again, I'll just divide that by 2. And that's the value I got for that part there. And you add the surface area of the cone to the surface area of half a sphere and then you get this value here. So I hope that's clear about why I only use part of the formula for the cone, because the base of the cone is not a surface area that we're concerned with because it's inside the shape this time. Alright guys, I hope that helps. Good luck in the exam.